Hello, and welcome to Full Sail on the Spot. I'm your host, Erica. And I'm Tyler. Today, we have some interesting stories ahead, including some information about America's favorite celebration in the month of October, Halloween. But before we get into all the fun, let's take a look at some healthy and entertaining activities in the Orlando and surrounding areas. When we think of keeping fit, we don't think about visiting the local batting cages. Burning at least 300 calories an hour, batting practice targets your forearms, triceps, and your core. Let's take a closer look at LeBron's batting cages in Orlando batting hotspot where Chris Baker is speaking to some local batters. Hi, I'm Chris Baker reporting for Full Sail. We're here at LeBron's batting cage and looking to see what you can get out in Orlando and do. How would you describe working at a fun environment like this? Awesome. Uh, these batting cages promote uh, well-being and you know an active exercise that people who live in Orlando can come and do? Yes, sir, it does. It does a great deal. I, I even try to help kids, you know, um, who need help and hitting. I do instructions here. I do just about everything just to help them go on. Yes, we do. We have softball players. We have baseball players, minor league baseball players. They come here. All sorts. All sorts. I love it. It's a giant toy. I mean, this is the best place that you can hang out on weekends because we're open weekends all the way to about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. We try to help everybody. This, and if you're looking to lose weight, this is the best place because you will work, you will work out. Every time the machine throws you, you're going to throw 20 baseballs, 20 softballs. You will sweat. You will really, you will feel it. Well, it's convenient. It always works. It's cheap. And we get some good training down here from uh, LeBron's son. I don't know yet, but it's kind of fun. Here at LeBron's Batting Cage, I'm Chris Baker, and back to you in the studio. I look like some fun. Might start doing that from now on. With no access to outdoor rock climbing areas in Florida, indoor rock climbing is becoming more and more popular as a workout regimen and is an optimal choice for fun and fitness. From beginners to experts, indoor rock climbing allows anyone to challenge themselves. Andrew Walker visited Eggweed Rock Climbing Center in Orlando to speak with climbers and employees at the facility. Good evening, I'm Andrew Walker. I'm reporting live for Full Sail News here at Eggweed Rock Climbing Center to see how kids like to keep in shape. Let's go inside and check it out. So I've been um, climbing for about 10 years now. I've been working here for about six. Um, everybody that comes in and climbs, as well as all the employees, um, it's like brothers and sisters, really. We're like one big family. So coming in to um, both climb and work, it's uh, just great seeing everybody, as well as um, getting the actual physical exercise that you need. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I like it. I come to a Wii two or three times a week. When I started rock climbing here uh, a year ago, I joined the Lyman Rock Climbing Club, and that's how I got involved. I look for any kind of physical activity to have fun with, and um, I'm definitely out of shape right now, and I'm feeling it. It's really fun, especially whenever you're like stressed and you need to kind of get some stuff off of your mind. The majority is locals. Uh, during the summer, yeah, a lot of the same people. Yeah, we have monthly memberships as well as year memberships and stuff like that. So the majority of our climbers that come in are here pretty much on a set workout schedule. Like, Well, I actually started rock climbing only like three months ago and I started here. I come here like five days a week. It's a lot of fun. I love it. Well, that's it for today. My name is Andrew Walker and I'm back to you guys at the Full Sail Studio. With 163 well-known surf spots along the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico coast, Florida is quite a hot spot for surfers and beachgoers alike. It is a good outlet for stress and tension while soaking in some vitamin D with a in a natural environment. Strong swimming skills and awareness, of, and awareness of the surf are important prerequisites before getting started. Jennifer McBroom took to the beaches of Daytona to talk with some local surfers and other beachgoers on activities they enjoy on the sand and in the water. This is Jennifer McBroom coming to you live from Daytona Beach, where we have spoken with a couple of surfers and local beachgoers to find out about their activities when they spend the day on the beach. Basically, it's all upper body and more strength, you know, because to keep the uh, glider up, you, know, you have to constantly uh, steer the glider left or right, so a lot of biceps and triceps, I mean, but this is good physical workout. About two or three times a week, and probably as long as I can, um, like five or six hours at least. No, I don't have nothing against the surfers. You know, <laughs> I mean, but uh, no, I don't, surf. I don't find it intriguing to me. You know. Edson, how long have you been surfing? Since I was three. Since you were three? Harrison, how long have you been surfing? Um, since I was five years old. So how often do y'all come to the beach to get to surf? At least once a month. Once a month? Oh, yeah. Get a good workout uh, the out triceps, there. yeah, pushing out, pushing out, and trying to keep up with someone who's been surfing already. It's, it's tough, but it's fun, though. I enjoyed it. I'm going to definitely come um, up here. Usually, I only have Sundays because we either play Fridays or Saturdays. Basically, we try to focus on the fundamentals, like serving, passing, setting try to work on those and improve our players. I try to come here as much as I can. So grab a board and hit the waves. Don't forget your sunscreen and always take a friend. This has been Jennifer McBroom, back to you in the newsroom. We'll be right back with some haunted Halloween cooking tips and some insight on how the rest of the world celebrates this season. On 
June 6th. He's part special agent. What are you, Bionic? No, 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 no. I only like the girls. Thanks anyways. Part stylist. Have you ever worked with kids before? <laughs> Business, this is not my name. Was that your feet? Adam Sandler. Smell it, smell it, now take it. That's for you. You don't mess with a Zohan. I want to be loved by you, just you. Nobody else but you. In the spirit of staying fit and healthy this holiday season, Amanda has some great recipes to show you. We have some interesting takes on a few old favorites to share with you today. Let's start over here with chocolate bark, my personal favorite. It has pistachios and dried cranberries. Per piece, you have 79 calories, 5 grams of fat, 11 grams carbs, 1 gram of protein, and 2 grams of fiber. Next, we have our chocolate dipped apricots. Per piece, we have 43 calories, one gram of fat, nine grams of carbs, no protein, and one gram of fiber. Moving on over here, we have the cinnamon apple candy bites. Per piece, you get 50 calories, zero grams of fat, 12 grams of carbs, no protein, and no fiber. And here, we have a refreshing and fruity four juice holiday punch. Vodka is optional. Per serving, we have 208 calories, no fat, 38 grams of carbs, zero protein, and no fiber. And to finish us off, great for munching, we have fruit and pecan granola bars. Each serving has 119 calories, three grams of fat, 22 grams of carbs, two grams of protein, and one gram of fiber. I sure know I'm hungry. The kids will have fun with all of these recipes and it'll add to the Halloween festivities. Or they're great for throwing a party for your friends. All of these recipes and many more can be found at www.eatingwell.com. Those sure do look fun and delicious. Can't wait to try them. Mm -hmm. candy, cost candy costumes in ha haunted houses are custom to our Halloween traditions, but do ghouls, ghosts, and goblins haunt the rest of the world? Jake Burton sat down with people from all over the world to find out about their home country's traditions of celebrating the holiday. I'm Jake Burton. As Halloween rapidly approaches, you may be wondering, how do people celebrate in other parts of the world? Well, today, we're gonna find that out. Well, now, in your own country, we, I know you don't really celebrate Halloween, but um, what's another celebration that's similar? Yeah, we don't celebrate Halloween. Um, we have something called Ghost Festival, mm -hmm. and Chinese, Chinese zombie like to jump. Uh, not really, we just, we celebrate it, and kind of the fact that it's Halloween, mm -hmm. like, we just have big graves yeah. and basically party. We don't have like the Halloween celebration. Mm -hmm. We don't celebrate it. Mm -hmm. Like the young people adapt it so they can just dress up and party. Mm -hmm. But we don't. We don't have Halloween. Halloween is an American thing. However, mm -hmm. we do have students, um, you know, younger kids who've come to the United States, studied mm -hmm. here, kind of gotten into the Halloween thing mm -hmm. and um, decided they were going to have their own little private mm -hmm. house parties. Mm -hmm. But um, our parents don't. They think it's evil. Yeah. <laughs> you know? See you later. <laughs> With the night of Halloween being right around the corner, let's see what the weather forecast shows for your trick-or-treating fun. It sure is getting spooky around here. Today's forecast in Florida will be 69 in Tampa, 68 in Orlando, and 74 in Miami. In our bordering states and cities, Atlanta, you're looking at 63, New Orleans will be 68, and that city, Houston, will be 74. Hey, it's Texas. Back to Tyler with sports. Thank you, Amanda. In sports, the 2012 NFL International Series game at Wembley Stadium in London will take place on Sunday, the, the 28th of October, when the St. Louis Rams take on the New England Patriots and Brady and Bradford go head-to-head, -head, with St. Louis as the home team. The most recent excitement in baseball, in baseball came October 3rd when Detroit Tigers' Miguel Cabrera won the Triple Crown, the Holy Grail of Goals for all hitters, achieved for the first time in 45 years, last won by Karl Jastrzemski in 1967. Don't go away. You don't want to miss out on our game show coming up next. This Friday, Ross, go. going back home ah. is never easy. It's going to be a long weekend. Ah. He started. 
Ah! Ah! Again, my mouth! Ah! Ah! Freak! Good morning, Reggie. Ah! Martin Lawrence. Oh! <laughs> Welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday. What are you building, Stock? I'm working on something big. Yeah, I can fly. I just finally know what I have to do. On June 6th, he's part special agent. What are you, bionic? No, 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 I only like the girls. It's anyways. Part stylist. Have you ever worked with kids before? <gasps> oh, man. Stay out of my business, Mustafa. Ah! This is not my name. Was that your feet? Adam Sandler. Smell it, smell it, now take it. That's for you. You don't mess with a Zohan. Welcome to the Apple Drill. In the spirit of Halloween, this week's first prize is a road trip to the 10 haunted houses in the United States. Oh my goodness, there's this one in Wisconsin, super awesome. They like throw knives like literally like this close to your head. It's so scary. All right, let's meet our contestants. Team one, we have Jody and Tyler. And team two, we have Haley and Kyle. Welcome guys. I hope you're all prepared for this fun round of the apple drill. You all know the rules. The first to uh, hit the buzzer and bark like a dog gets the option to answer the question. All right, let's get started with question one. All right. Which indoor sport is the most popular in the United States? Is it A, hockey, B, volleyball, C, basketball, or D, soccer? I did not hear a dog bark. Bark, bark, bark. <laughs> All right, Haley. Soccer? It is not soccer. Oh. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> yes. Uh, would it be basketball? Is that your final answer? I believe so. All right, it is correct. It is basketball. <laughs> All right. Out of all the 50 states, in the, which is the biggest in the United States? Is it A, California, B, Texas, C, Alaska, or D, New York? Dog barking? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, team one. <laughs> team one. Is it uh, Texas? Is that, that your wasn't final really answer? A bark. That was a bark. That was not a bark. <laughs> I don't even try to say that that wasn't a bark. Whatever. Uh, yes. That is your final answer is Texas? Yes. Yes. That is... Incorrect. I'm so sorry. I did not hear a dog bark. Rart, rart, rart. <laughs> All right, team two. Alaska. It is, in fact, Alaska. Oh, yeah. Yeah. High five. Woo. All right. Number three. What is Aurora Borealis commonly known as? The sunset, the northern lights, the sunrise, or the moonlight? Uh, uh, dog bark? Rart, rart. Is it A? It is not A. Uh, Ruff, ruff. Team one. Is it the Northern Lights? Was oh, that your final answer? Uh, that is my final answer. That is correct. <laughs> it is the Northern Lights. Whatever. On to number four. Who painted the ceiling? Oh, this is Teen Chapel, which is gorgeous, by the way. Check it out. All right, is it A, Leonardo DiCaprio, handsome as he is, Michelangelo, Teddy Roosevelt, we're actually friends, Teddy and I, or D, Charlie Chaplin? Ruff, ruff. Yes, team two. It is Michelangelo. It is Michelangelo, and I'm not talking about the Ninja oh, Turtle. Yeah. Ninja Turtle. Out. Sweet. Awesome. Okay, question five. What country has the biggest population, as in number of people? Is it A, China, B, Russia, C, Canada, or D, Africa? <laughs> yes, team one. Is it China? Is that your final answer? That is. Are you sure? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yes. All right, it is in fact China. Oh, Sweet, all right. Next question. Who is the writer, as in writing, of Alice's Adventure in Wonderland? Was it A, Tim Burton, B, Lewis Carroll, C, Michael Bay, bam, bam, or D, Danielle Steele? Woo, woo, woo. Yes, team two. Uh, Lewis Carroll. It is in fact right. Lewis Carroll. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness, we are at a tie right now. <gasps> what? This is the last question Stop it. before round two. Oh, hi. Are you, <laughs> are all teams ready? Yes, we are ready. ready. ready for the All right. Where did reggae music originate? Wait, it? she's cheating. I don't know what you're talking about. I think she should be disqualified. I concur. Sorry. Should it she be disqualified? No. It's cool. All <laughs> right. Where did reggae music originate? A, Africa. B, Spain. C, South America. Or D, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. Ruff, ruff. 
Yes, team one. Jamaica. Is that your final answer? That ah. is. All right. That is. Yes. That is correct. Oh. It was close, but not quite. Looks like team one. They cheated. Jody and Tyler advance to the right, final round. Right. We will return with more of the Apple drill after these messages. You're going down. This Friday, Ross, go. going back home is never easy. It's going to be a long weekend. He ah. started. Ah. Again, my mouth. Ah. Ah. Freak. Good morning, Reggie. Ah. Martin Lawrence. Oh. <laughs> Welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday. What are you building, Stock? I'm working on something big. Yeah, I can fly. I just finally know what I have to do. Drop the microphone. Hey, we're back with Jody and Tyler. In this round, whoever uh, comes up with an apple first gets the opportunity to answer the question. All right, let's begin. Question one, what popular Halloween candy in the U.S. was the first penny candy, as in cost only a penny, to be wrapped for sale? Was it A, peppermint sticks, B, Bitto honey, C, Hershey kisses, or D, Tootsie Rolls? The answer is Tootsie Rolls. That is correct. All right. <laughs> is this your first time, Tyler? It is my very first time. Very first time, Bobby Praffles. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you in this experience. All right, what is the meaning of the word hollow in relation to this holiday, Halloween? Is it A, candy, B, winter, C, saint, or D, witch? The answer is saint. That is, in fact, the answer. All right, you still have a chance to catch up, Tyler. Still have a chance. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Woo, competition. All right. The familiar jack-o'-lantern is thought to have originated in which country? A, Spain, B, United States of America, C, Ireland, or D, Egypt? Spain. <laughs> is that your final answer? Yeah. Yes. That is incorrect. <coughs> the answer is Ireland. That is correct. Ooh, ooh. Three points, three points to nothing. Come on, Tyler. All right. <laughs> you got one apple. Good job, Bobby Praffles. All right, question four. The ancient Celts believed that Halloween night evil spirits roamed the countryside, which would be super frightening. What did they do in an attempt to protect themselves? Did they, A, bob for apples in, what, in such a, of a manner that you are doing? B, they wore masks and costumes. C, they burned candy and fruit in a bonfire. Fun, fun. Or D, they went to door to door giving out treats. They wore they masks know, and <laughs> Giving out Jim's. treats. All right, I will ask our judges. Judges, did they, who, which one got it? Tyler, oh, Wait. yay, one Wait. for Tyler. All right, last question. Wait, no, no, he didn't get it. He said, what, what answer did you say? I said the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> I said the wrong he answer. He said the wrong answer. All right, we'll give it to Jody. Thank you, judges. Thank you for your, for your kind words. Um, give him kid hope when he didn't have any. Okay, um, question five, last question. There is an old belief that it's good luck to which of the following on Halloween? Pumpkins, bats, spiders, which is gross, my roommate and I hate them, or D, black cats? Ah, black cats. <laughs> is that your final answer? Yes. That is yes. incorrect. It is spiders. It is, in fact, spiders. All right, that was a really, not really a close game at all. But we will be back with our, our mysterious winner of the apple drill after these commercials. We're not sure what the USA Today ad meter will think of this commercial tomorrow, but we're pretty sure Mercedes, BMW, and Lexus aren't gonna like it very much. Introducing the 375 horsepower Hyundai Genesis. Just relax, the operation will be over before you know it. Anesthesia on. Okay, scalpel. Ow. I can feel that. Can you feel this? Oh, anesthesia on. Not everything responds to your voice like sync. Introducing sync. Play artist, the flaming lips. Voice activate your MP3 player, Bluetooth phone. Call lawyer, Harrison Baxter. And more. Sync, powered by Microsoft. Exclusively on new Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. All right, congratulations, Jody. How fun was that? That was so much fun. Oh, fantastic. Such competition. Right? Are you excited to visit all the haunted houses? 
I so definitely am. Are you gonna take anyone with you? Um, I might take my daughter. Oh, and how old is she? She is two. Oh, she, beautiful age, beautiful yes. age. Yes. Well, enjoy your trip. Thank you. I hope you have a very safe travels. Back to you guys in the studio. Speaking of a haunting trip, if you are still looking for your spooky costume and you want to fit in with the stars, how about taking a quick trip to London? With the Queen's permission and the Victoria and Albert Museum set up a show with over 100 ironic Hollywood costumes, from Charlie Chaplin's tramp outfit and Judy Garland's red slippers from The Wizard of Oz, all the way to today's blockbusters such as Avatar and The Bourne Identity. To coincide with the exhibition, the British Film Institute said Tuesday it was given 500 costumes to the V&A Museum, including the Spider-Man outfit worn by Christopher Reeves in the Spider-Man 4. The exhibition opens Saturday and runs until January 27th, so go on and check it out. Oktoberfest is also a fun holiday many Americans celebrate in the month of October as well. Originally in Germany, where it is a 16-day festival celebrating beer held annually in Munich, Bavaria, running from late September to the first weekend in October. It is one of the most famous events in Germany and is the world's largest fair, with more than 6 million people from around the world attending the event every year. To the locals, it is not called Oktoberfest, but Die Wiesen, after the colloquial name of the fairgrounds themselves. The Oktoberfest is an important part of Bavarian culture, having been held since 1810. Other cities across the world also hold Oktoberfest celebrations, modeled after the original Munich event. This has been an exciting show. I hope all of you have had as much fun as we did. Thank you for watching Full Sail on the Spot. Tune in again next week when we figure out how to hunt, uh, how to hunt a turkey. Have a wonderful week.